38 years. Lord. Nobody's ever invited me to preach over here. <laughs> <laughs> ever one time. Ever one time. Have I, have I ever preached here? No. I got a little bit of some timers, but I don't remember. I don't think I've ever preached here. We've done cantatas here. My first Sunday here. Oh, I preached yeah. it. Are you sure? Yeah. The message you're about to preach. <laughs> Probably the same. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. You did. Josh has preached here. Not that I know of. I didn't know I was there. <laughs> Who knows? I, I don't know. I've met some good friends today that some some friends that I know will have they'll be my friends for all of a sudden, Brother Garcia. Brother Gip, glad glad to get to know you today. And then Brother Tony, you're coming up to preach right after me, kinda of clean everything up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grow up with some fastballs and then uh, you're gonna be the closer. If things go bad, just don't signal for the lefty. We don't want that here tonight, right? <laughs> Revelation chapter three, if you turn over there, Revelation and and chapter three. Well, we got a bunch of preachers here tonight, and uh, so a little bit of preaching to the choir. I do know that preachers need encouragement as well. I know, I know the folk here from Drummond Island. You are youpers, just like I am. I, I'm proud to be a, a, a youper, and I tell everybody when I preach other places that I'm from the uh, UP. That's where men are men, and so are the women. <laughs> that, that was a fact. Thank you for your faithfulness. I want to say at the beginning of this message. We are for you. You know, right. we, we are your friend. You are not alone here on Drummond Island. Right. Yeah, Any right. part that we can yeah. have in, in establishing this church, we count that a great blessing. Amen. I look at it this way, and this is in all reality, I am every Bible fundamentalist's friend. Because there just aren't a whole lot of us anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, that's not a sad kind of um, moaning and bewailing kind of message. I'm just saying, God has always had a people. I'm going to preach tonight just a little bit on the Philadelphia church and trust it will be a blessing to you. And that's what you want to be. You want to be at the Philadelphia church, God's representative, right here on, on Drummond Island. Seven churches in Asia Minor. Here's a church, the Philadelphia church, that uh, nothing negative was said about. God loves this church. This is a church that will be thriving. This is a church that will be in the saddle on the front lines of the battle when the trumpet sounds for the rapture. And, and I know, and you know, that is not very far away. This has nothing to do with my message, but did you know that last week, for the first time in modern history, Israel had, uh, had practiced uh, uh, war games for a two-front war where they had every jet they possessed in the air every naval vessel out at sea, all of their military, men and women at arms, and they're ready for a two-front war. We are right at the edge of, 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 of the end of the church. These are the very last days of the church. God's ordained the church. And I want you to know that the church is God's idea. He knew what he was doing when he sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost and on that day, was, that was the birthday of the church. Oh, yeah. The church was energized, baptized, energized, and, and, and ordained for the work of God. Mm -hmm. And now you've started a church by the leading of God right here on Drummond Island. Mm -hmm. It's a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I was a Bible fundamentalist. Man, I, I love the Word of God. I do. Amen. In fact, I, I better go through my little spew because I don't think too many of you have heard it before. Maybe some of you preachers have, but... I, I'm a Bible fundamentalist, and I'll tell you why. I, I, tell, I drink my coffee black. Yeah. That's because I'm a Bible fundamentalist. Yeah. <laughs> no milk, no hazel, not, no vanilla, no, none of that foo-foo flavoring. I'm a Bible fundamentalist. I drink my coffee black. Yeah. I cut my own hair. Oh my. Yeah. That's because I'm a Bible fundamentalist. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder what the people behind me in church are looking at back there, but I, I cut my own hair. I don't go to a I don't go. I, I don't go to a barber shop, and I certainly don't go to a salon. And God help you in if you go to a salon. And I'll give you a little, little, little tidbit here. Never trust a preacher that gets a perm. Oh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I, I'm a Bible fundamentalist. John Wayne is my hero. I'm a Bible fundamentalist. I love rock rib. Snot running from your nose, medicine taste in your mouth after the big hit, American football. Yeah. And I still believe that soccer is part of the communist infiltration. Oh, I'm a Bible front of those. I love the word of God. Revelation, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7. Revelation chapter 3 and, and verse 7. 
It says in verse 7, and the angel of the church in Philadelphia, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. By the way, what's Philadelphia mean? Brotherly love. Brotherly love. Man, we ought to be known for that in the church of Jesus yes, Christ. Right. Not for being antagonists, not for having a chip on our shoulder, but for really. Jesus said, they'll know you're my disciples by your love one for another. Right. And we ought, we, people ought to identify that with Drummond Island Baptist Church. Yeah. They think a fundamental Baptist church, they, that's what they ought to be. Those people know how to love one another. Yeah. Yeah. It says, and to the angel of the church at Philadelphia write, these things saith he that is holy. That's Jesus, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Good to be reminded of that. He's holy. He's pure. These things saith he, uh, saith he that is holy, he that is true, that's genuine, he that hath the key of David, that speaks of authority, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. And, and by the way, the Philadelphia Church is the church of the Great Commission. If you, if, let me just kind of give you a little bit of background here for just a little bit. John on the island of Patmos, God shows him these things. He's writing it down as fast as he's getting it. And I, I think every once in a while the angel will tap him on the shoulder and say, hey, keep writing, John. Oh, yeah, yeah. He writes it down and he's writing down his words of inspiration. It is the word of God. And, and, and he says here in Revelation in chapter, chapter 3 and verse 7 that I have ordained the church. And the church of Philadelphia, that is the church that is going to be thriving. That's the church that will still be in the saddle. When the trumpet sounds, when the dust settles, when the when the battle is over, I will I have always had a people, and I will always have a people. God bless bless his church. God bless Drummond Island Baptist Church. God bless the pastor of Drummond Island Baptist Church. You have a great, a great opportunity. It says in verse 8, I know thy works. Church in Philadelphia church that God has blessed, a church that God has chosen to use in the very last days of this age we call the, the church age. What a privilege it is to pastor a New Testament church. Amen. What an honor it is Amen. to serve God. Yeah. Well, I, I hope you know that. I hope you can identify that even in your own life. Man, I love Fundamental Baptist Church. It's not a perfect church. Some of you people, there's a few people here that are members a fundamental Baptist church, you know, and uh, you know it, man. It's not a perfect people that attend that church. Am I right, Ray? <laughs> the song leader's not perfect. The choir members aren't perfect. Preacher's pretty close. He's up front there leading, but uh, he's, he's far from perfect as well. But I love Sunday morning. Amen. Sunday morning, yeah. hundreds of people come from all over rural Chippewa County. By the way, you're part of Chippewa County. 38,000 people in this county. 38,000 people, less than 1,000 people go to a Bible-believing church on Sunday morning. Right, amen. As, as a matter of fact, 3%, 9.9 million people in Michigan, 3% live in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, often referred to in the fact there's a book entitled The Dark Peninsula. We've got to change that spiritually. Yeah. Right. We've got to light the gospel light spiritually amen. in the Upper right. Peninsula of Michigan. 3% of the population of Michigan live in the Upper Peninsula. This is nationwide, by the way. Seven out of ten people have nothing to do with organized religion. In America, Christian America, seven out of ten people never darken the door of a church of any kind. That's the nation we are now living in. In 1962, America shook its fist at God. And said, relegated God out of the public school right, with prayer right. and Bible right. reading. Yes, now we're in the second generation of that, and we're reaping it all over America. Yes, it, is, it is modern day Sodom. Yes, right. I never thought I'd see this yes, day. Right. In the Upper Peninsula. Two men holding hands in Walmart in Sault Ste. Yeah. Marie. I never thought I would see that day. Yeah. We, we, have come, we have fallen yeah. so far from the grace of God. Yeah. Right. He said, Jesus said, in the days of, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the day that, 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 that God returns to this earth. Yep. Man, we're there. People just, all kinds of depravity. Yeah. It, it, in every direction. And in all of it, we get to be a New Testament local church. Amen. What a privilege. Verse 8, I know thy works. God knows your struggle. God knows every mountain you've had to climb here at Drummond Island Baptist Church. 
God knows every valley you've had to pass through, all the deep water. God understands exactly what has happened in homes and in your heart and in the lifeblood of this church. God says to the church of Philadelphia, I know that works. And by the way, it will be worth it one day. Amen. I, I, I was misquoted in the paper in 1981. 1981 is when I became pastor of 25 people in Red Yard, Michigan. We've now moved to the big metropolis of Kinross, but in Red Yard, Michigan, I was the pastor, uh, uh, you know, voted as pastor, and, and they interviewed me in the paper, and I was young, wet behind the ears, and dumb as a box of rocks, and I, I, I graduated from some of that, but I'm still as dumb as a box of rocks, and, and, and they misquoted me, and I said, someday, and we're in a little garage, a little tin building with no windows in the middle of an open hay field in Red Yard, Michigan, where they're in a tree within five miles to the south, and almost five miles to the north, and then I mean, just the wind sweeps through there, just the most depressing thing you ever saw. 50, 50 folding chairs. We could never warm the building up. I could tell you story after story, and the paper quoted me as saying, someday that we will average, it was all worded wrong, we will average 200 members of Fundamental Baptist Church. And everybody laughed. I, you could hear the guffaws and the laughter from the town of the village of Red Yard right out to the left, and, and, and people made fun of us. <coughs> Fast forward 38 years, Amen. and they're not laughing anymore. Amen. Amen. And ma as a matter of fact, they stopped laughing a long time ago. Amen. God is on the throne. Amen. Amen. He knows your struggle. Amen. He, he knows the difficulty you go through. <coughs> we have a God that understands. Take your Bibles, turn to Romans 8. Romans chapter 8, real quick. <coughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 17. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy. Let me start over again. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy Amen. to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered in the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Amen. Now that's not just talking about heaven. You, you study that out in its context. That's talking about this life right now as well. Amen. The abundant life that, that the Lord Jesus Christ makes available to his people. Yeah. <laughs> we may not be as big a number as some, but you're important to God. Right. Amen. Right. Right. And, 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 and don't limit what God will do. Right. Right. And I, Amen. 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 And I just checked, and I know the statistic is at least a year old. I think it was 1,049 people <laughs> on this island. That, that would probably be your, your own people. <laughs> And you know what? Don't limit what you know. I'm telling you, don't. I know you got a big building going over there, and and my first thought was, man, that built kind of big for the first building. You know, it seems like you build small and build and build on just a little bit. And uh, you know, brother Charles mentioned that too. He said, man, you know, we got a big. Hey, could it be that behind the scenes, God knows exactly yeah, what He's doing? That's right, right, amen. Yeah, that's right. Could it be that you're going to turn this <laughs> island upside down for God? Amen. Yeah, yeah. oh, and you, could it be you'd be that Philadelphia church? That there's no explanation other than God. Right. Yeah. Now, he, we need to be found faithful. He says, yeah. and yeah. God knows our struggle. Yeah. He said, man, I, I know your works. Hudson Taylor said this when it was time to, uh, and he's the founder of China Inland Mission at the time. Yeah. He said, when God was ready to evangelize China, he looked for a man and found someone who was nothing enough hmm. to work hard yeah. Give the glory to God. Right. Amen. That's right. I heard a preacher say this two weeks ago. I think some of you were there. And I thought, what is he talking about? He said, you and I, we're just like a turtle on a fence post. And I didn't know what he was talking about either. Turtle on a fence post. We didn't get here by ourselves. That's right. Amen. Amen. We're not alone in the battle. We have a God in heaven. We have brothers and sisters in the Lord. We have the great honor. And everything you do, God knows. He says, I know thy works. Go back again to verse 8. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Look at Philippians in chapter 3. Would you turn there? Philippians in chapter 3. We're not on a radio or anything, so we can take time to do this. Philippians in chapter 3, in verses 7 through 14. Verse 7 says, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. The Apostle Paul says, 
You're talking about pedigree and, and um, um, skills and credentials. He said, listen, let me talk foolishly for just a moment. Because mm -hmm. Paul didn't take any of the glory. Right. He said, I'm more Jew than any of you <coughs> talking to the Judaizers. Mm -hmm. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. Yeah, right. I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisees. I'm the tribe of Benjamin. Mm -hmm. and I, I was a promising young rabbi. I believe a member of the Sanhedrin. This was, a, this was a rabbi that was going to lead, uh, you know, lead in, in, in Judaism of that day. Uh, a religionist of all religionists. And he said, I traded it all away for Jesus Christ. Yeah. And he said, I got the best part of the deal. Yeah. I traded yeah. heartaches yeah. for heaven. Yeah. 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 And I, I, I traded all the struggles of this life for, for an eternal home. Yeah. It says, ye doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of yeah. Christ. Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb. He said, all those credentials, they're sewage. Yeah. 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 It's manure. Right. right. I'm standing in front of you this evening, and I'm telling you, I've got two credentials. I'm saved, and I'm surrendered. Amen. That's it. That's, right. That's it. If, 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 if you'd have known me before I surrendered to preach, even as a young man, you would never have chosen Tim Rader to lead any kind of church anywhere. In fact, there's a young man that he, he couldn't stand. I'll take an effing speech before I stand up in front of anybody. Yeah. It, it, it's amazing what God does oh, yeah. when you just surrender. Oh, yeah. So Paul had all these things going for him, but he surrendered it all. He said, man, it's all sewage that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. i got to say this real quickly, and I, I'm getting bogged down in, in an area that, I, I, I need to move on with this message, but you need to understand this. Any righteousness that you can cling to tonight, it better be the righteousness of Christ. Right. Right. And not your own. Yeah. You need to lift yourself up by your own bootstraps. Oh, no, you haven't arrived. You can't, you can't sustain your life. You can't even keep your own heart beating. That's right. Yeah. Right. You, you just depend on God. Right. And the imputed yeah. righteousness right. of Christ. That's right. So when God the Father looks down at this whole sinner man, he sees me through the prism of the blood of the only begotten Son of God. Yeah. Right. He sees the righteousness of Jesus That's Christ. Right. Right. You know what? Amen. If Drum and I and Baptist Church will just find a way, and I'm telling you, think outside the box. If you have to, just think outside the box. But, but you've got to do your best at exalting Jesus Christ Amen. as the Savior of the world. Yeah. Right. The island's dark spiritually, then you've got to change that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lift high Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, I know he's talking about Calvary, mm -hmm. but if I be lifted up, I will draw all men all right. unto me. Yeah. Yeah. That's the God that we serve. Yeah. So the job of Drummond Island Baptist Church is not to pat yourself on the back, mm -hmm. but instead to exalt Jesus That's Christ. Right. Yeah. He said, I know that works. Uh, oh, go back to, to, to Revelation chapter 3. I know thy works. Behold, I've set before thee an open door, and no man can yeah. shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. If you are like the typical independent Baptist church, you don't have a lot of resources. I don't know, are there any billionaires in this congregation? <laughs> not that I've been over. I think you've been over. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to keep it a secret. <laughs> you know, they're just, we don't have a Right, right now, there's a camp going on at Canaan Land Baptist Bible Camp, and if you walk through the bus parking lot, which is out behind the camp now, it's typical. You walk and check those buses, and you'll see some pretty skinny tires in some of those buses, and you'll see, I saw one pull in today with duct tape holding a window in the side, and I'm thinking, yeah, this is our crowd. This is, this is the independent Baptist movement, and God help us if we ever get fancy. Hey, God help It isn't that God will bless us. He will. But, but it better not ever be about treasures on this earth. Right. Right. It better not ever be about you know, exalting and lifting up and making a name for ourselves. God, God keep us from that. Right. Yeah. The, the Church of Philadelphia, he says, uh, he says here, just a little strength, not a lot of resources. My dad taught me about life. He's still alive. My mom went home to heaven just two weeks ago now. Oh. It was a glorious, she went home great, and it was a glorious funeral service. Yeah. But my dad taught me about life. He is my hero, not John Wayne. He taught me how to ride a horse and fall a tree. And he taught me how to shoot a gun and hoist a hockey puck. One day I said, Dad, what about golf? And he said, Son, 
<laughs> we're Christians. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, man. I got you. And I am the world's worst golfer. I mean, I've probably golfed three times in my life, and I've embarrassed my every time. I, now some preachers invite me to play golf. I said, nope, not me. First time I got out there, and, and I play hockey. Man, I'm, I, I played men's hockey. We up to about a decade ago. We had a church hockey team. Talking about thinking outside the box. And, and, and the guy's handing me the, 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 the bag with it. And, and he, they said, uh, I said, man, I don't even know how to hold the stick. And they all laughed and laughed and laughed. I didn't even hear myself. Stick. Hockey stick. That's the way I played, by the way. That's exactly how I played. I won't go into any details there. <laughs> we, we may not have a lot of resources, but we have a God that... Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Yeah. I told our Lord people just God. Sunday, God isn't dependent on the American dollar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if you're that tight wad that you think, you just hang on to your money. Yeah. Just hang on to it. God doesn't want it. No. God doesn't yeah. need, what happened before America was here? What happened before the U.S. dollar came? Right. You think God needs your little peddly bit of money? You say, oh, I got a lot of money. You, you think God needs that? Man, nothing's tight in heaven. Right. The bank of heaven has got all Amen. the resources it'll Amen. ever need. That's right. In fact, we're not redeemed with silver and gold. Right. But right. something far better than that, Amen. the precious Amen. blood of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. That's right. Amen. So here's the church of Philadelphia. Church of Philadelphia, a blue-collar, working-class church. Not a lot of resources, but, but you know they're trusting in God. Go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, real quickly, I'm going to speed this up. 1 Corinthians in chapter 1. Verse 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And, and, and believe me, God doesn't need a Hollywood smile. God doesn't need your winsome personality. God doesn't need, you're not God's gift to the, to the work of God. All God is looking for is a vessel. And what he says here, what Paul says through him, what God says through Paul in 1 Corinthians, this first letter to the, to the church of Corinth, which was a very prideful church. That was one of their sins. And what he tells him is, God doesn't need talent. All God needs is a vessel. Right, yeah, right, right, right. All God needs is a young man or a young woman. All God needs is a little country church. Doesn't try to be a big city church. Just a little country church that knows who they are and knows who their God is and just surrenders. Yeah. 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 the credentials. Yeah. Yeah. The foolishness of God is wiser than men. The weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many might, not many wise men after the flesh and not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the, thing, confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are, are, are mighty. And the base things, the nobodies, that's how I got in. The base things of the world and the things which are despised have God chosen, yea, the things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh should yeah. glory in his presence. Right, By right. the way, that's why I got in. Because yeah. I still know it's not me. I, I know that I'll fall right flat on my face if God takes his hand away. Yeah. Yeah. It, says, it says that no flesh should glory. Verse 31, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Praise God Lord. uses nobodies. Yeah. Yeah. God uses idiots. Right. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when Pastor Bill, is he preaching on Wednesday night? Yeah. If you would introduce him as a stupid <laughs> idiot, there's an inside joke there. He'll fall off that ship. He said, he will, he'll wonder, he will, he will know I was here before him. All right? It's an inside joke. I don't know if we're any further than that. Just now we have with us tonight. We have with us tonight an assistant pastor at Fundamental Baptist Church, and he is a stupid idiot. You do that. Oh, it'll be fun. And I'll be laughing at her meetings, thinking it's going on right, right now. God doesn't need. And isn't it amazing that God uses me? Isn't that amazing? With my twisted, twisted sense of humor. And people at our church, they put up with it. You know what? You know, I believe Ray Strong in the Lord. Because of my foolishness. <laughs> He's had to put up with a lot, and you've gotten stronger. I made Greg a spiritual giant because he puts up with my, my, my sick sense of humor all, all of the time. <laughs> I look around, Chuck, right? Yeah. I made you what you are because That's you put right. up with me. God strengthened you. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> God uses the nobodies. So I, I said this today in the ordination council, and I, and I told you, Pastor, don't try to be somebody other than from an island Baptist church. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, right. you, you don't need to be a big city church. We, we took that and run with it. People laugh at us because we're youpers. So on our brochure, it says all three pastors are youpers, born and raised, right here. Craig's a youper, our song leader. 
you know, born, well, here we are. We're youpers. One loves fishing, two loves football, one loves hunting. We're youpers, just regular guys. We're a country church, and we're proud of being a country Amen. church. Amen. We don't need to be an uptown Amen. church. And if you were an uptown church here in Drummond Island, that'd be as phony as a three dollar bill. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And people would see it. People aren't gonna get saved. Not, not, not for that. But if you're real, yeah. you'll think outside the box just a little bit. I gotta move on here. Verse 8 also says they're faithful in the struggle. They're faithful with what God has entrusted them with. First Timothy 1.12. I got all kinds of scripture here to share with you, but the struggle isn't isn't always easy, but God is good in all of it. We have a little Christian school, and far from perfect, and our kids aren't little angels. And we have our old school gathering, and the whole student body usually sings, and everybody, they get up there, and I'm so proud of them. Sometimes I'm thinking, I can't believe those are our kids. You know, they'll, they'll be up there, and it'll be like, you know, like, like 80, 85 kids, whatever the student body is for the year, and they're all dressed up, and they look so good and so clean, and their hair is even combed and everything, and, and they're singing. I'm thinking, man, and everybody, and every, every pastor thinks the same thing. Man, why can't our Christian school be that way? If that's our Christian school on parade. <laughs> that's not our Christian school Monday through Friday. I spent my whole day walking by the young men saying, you know, put on a belt or cut your pants up or get a haircut. Get a haircut or buy a purse. You know what I mean? That's all the time. It, it never stops. But we do want to, listen, we want to take what we have and use it for the glory of God. Right. Hey, hold on to your Bible. Look at verse 8. And has kept my word and has not denied my name. I, 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 I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but um, man, I love the King James Bible. Uh, it works. It works. Let me tell you what Billy Graham said, by the way. And I, I've shared this. Pastor Josh preaches a great message on the, on the King James Bible. Very academic, man. He just nails it. But but this is what Billy Graham, I remember reading this in, um, what was the magazine he used to put Decision. out? Decision. Decision, all right. Yeah, yeah. and, and it, was, it was a pastor's interview, and they had it in, in print in the magazine. This is way back in the 70s. Somebody said, Dr. Graham, you, you, you uh, recommend all kinds of versions of the Bible. Why is it you only preach out of the King James Bible? <clears throat> well, let me read this. And I read his answer, and he said, well, for a while, I tried preaching other versions. I didn't get the same results at the altar. Amen. Amen. <laughs> wow. Amen. Yeah. God's preserved his word. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm so Amen. thankful for that. They're faithful in the struggle. This church in Philadelphia they held on to their Bible and said, oh boy, here's something else. Verse 9. The church of the open door. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. There'll be a little vindication. I'll make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. By the way, the church in town that laughed so hard at the me being misquoted in the paper, they're just hanging on. Mm -hmm. There are 20 people there on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. They're just yeah. hanging on. <laughs> I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept thy word, thy patience, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Yeah. Verse 8 and verse 7 refers to that open door. The Church of Philadelphia is a church of great opportunity. We today, because of the freedoms we have in America, God has opened the door. So if we've got the gospel, we've got the truth, and we don't take advantage of this day in which we live. First Corinthians chapter 9, Paul said, there's a dispensation of time committed unto me. I am responsible, Paul said, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. Yeah, yeah. Paul said, I'm responsible for a period of time. God put me on this earth. Here I am. I'm planted here on purpose. You're in Drummond Island on purpose. God put you here in the year 2019 on purpose. You will stand before God at the Bema seat of Christ, where Christians stand before God, and you'll give an account of what you did with Jesus during the dispensation that was committed unto you. That's right. You understand? Amen. The church yeah. of Philadelphia has a great responsibility. Right. It is the church of the open door. Mm -hmm. We've got so many opportunities. So many. Think yeah. outside the box. Yeah. Find a way to get the Bible in everybody's yeah. home. Amen. Find a way to talk to, uh, talk to people all, all over the island and, and, and tell them of Jesus. 
do what you got to do. Man, boys, have a, have a little boys and girls club. Do, do whatever you got to do. We had a hockey team at Fundamental Baptist Church. We called it, somebody bought us some uniforms and a bunch of old hockey players. Some of them were young. And, and um, I said 10 years ago, and I got, even after I said that, you know, it's closer to, probably closer to 20 years ago. Yeah, I've been there 10 years, and you didn't have a team when I was there. It's it is slipped away. It has. But somebody bought us uniforms, and every once in a while, we'd play a full contact game. We'd go up into Canada, we played some little colleges over, the, uh, you know, out of Minnesota, and the western end of the UP, and northern, northern Wisconsin, and man, we were all decked up. We called ourselves Baptist Fire, and we were like, man, we were like little kids all over again. Even though our bodies were letting us down drastically, we, it was like it was like brand new territory. I forget what I was going to tell you. Anyway, I remember what it was. Now. All right, all right, I was going to tell you something funny, but I'll skip that. You know what? We would always use it to preach the gospel, Amen. to share the gospel. If if they wouldn't come to our locker room, if we couldn't say anything out on the ice, then what we would do is we would buy pizza and we'd go over to the visiting team's locker room and 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 say, "Hey guys, we got some pizza for you." Hey, 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 thanks a lot, you know, and they, they start eating it, and they're drinking their beer. I said, can I talk, can I say something? Will you give me just five minutes? Oh, yeah, go ahead, preachers, you know, and I share the gospel. Amen. And usually a couple, I take a couple big men with me, and they, they're back here as well. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I share the gospel, and I, I cannot tell you how many men got saved. Amen. That, Amen. you know, just Amen. toothless, <laughs> battle-scarred Amen. men. Pray the sinner's prayer and tears dripping down their cheek, you know. The men had gotten saved that I, I have no idea where they're from. And as far as I know, never would never darken the door of a church. But they go to the hockey rink at night. Mm -hmm. Think outside the box. Find a way to exalt Jesus. Amen. i got to close this off. Verse 10. Verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of thy, my patience... I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. No tribulation, not for the Philadelphia church. It's the Philadelphia church that's raptured out of this earth just before the tribulation starts. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, For God hath not appointed us unto wrath. Right. I am not going to be here during the tribulation. Right. Yeah, I know Israel's getting ready for war, and I pray for Israel. Yeah. And we need to be a friend of the nation Israel. Yeah. And I understand that the Middle East is a hotbed. Man, things are just ready to bust. But before that ever takes, before the yeah. tribulation, before Jacob's sorrow, Jacob's trouble ever takes place, the trumpet of we're going to be rescued. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be raptured yeah. from, this, from this earth. Yeah. We're going home to heaven. Yeah. The church in Philadelphia, it might be that I am not going to experience death. Hmm. Oh, no. Sure. Yeah. Now, here's a happy thought. Let me give this to you. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm closing this off now, so get ready for me, right? Um, one day you're going to die. Hmm. And they're going to carry you down to the local cemetery. Yep. And they're going to put your body in a hole they dug there. <laughs> and then they're going to throw dirt in your face. And they're going to go back to the church house and eat potato salad. <laughs> That's how it works. Kind of a warm thought, isn't it? I think that might be a Baptist distinction. That potato salad down there. <laughs> We're all going to die apart from the rapture of the church. But I got good news for you, church. Those of you that are born again, Jesus is coming. Yeah. Jesus is coming. You may not go the way the undertaker. You may go the way the upper yeah. the, 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 what, a, what a glorious day that's going to be. The church, the Philadelphia church, what a glorious homecoming. Um, my mom died a little over two weeks ago. Everybody referred to her as Ma Raider.